Okay, okay welcome back everyone. Courtney's got us re reconnected, um, hardwired right to the router. We had to get unconnected and reconnected. Right. So we apologize for that. But we'll we'll get it. Like I said, it was a hectic day. We had um, Thanksgiving at my parents, and then they went to Jason's grandparents, and then we're here. So, so now she says we're not blurry. So okay, great. I hope no one lost us, and I hope you guys got back on. So sorry about that. So I just base coated our tree black. So we got him nice and black, and then um, the next thing that I want is my tires black. So I'm actually going to switch to my liner for that. And I have my Royal Majestic um, 4595 5 liner. And it's just a nice little liner with a nice point on it. And I need some more paint here again. So Courtney is actually going to delete the first part, so I'll go back over what we did. I just base coated our trucks with our barnyard red, and that was our OS 503 Duncan. So we have them base coated basically with our red, except for the tires. And then we did this truck with the tree the same way, and I base coated our tree with black. And now I grabbed my Royal Majestic 50 liner, and I'm going to outline my, trim out my tires. And when you're um, trimming something else, you want to have your hand anchored your, that's holding your piece. You want your piece anchored in your hand. You also want to have your painting hand anchored. And I'm taking my brush and I'm drawing it through my paint and I'm turning it clockwise to get a nice point on my brush. And I want to anchor my hand onto my painted piece. Or you can have it anchored on the table, but you want it anchored so you can have nice, um, not shaky lines. So I'm just going to draw. I start out into the tire, and I merge over towards where I want my line to be. That way I can see where my black is. And then I'm just going to paint out where I want this tire, where it um, comes to the fender. And I do have to stop talking when I'm doing that so I don't have a shaky line. And again, I'm going to start into my tire and merge out to my black lines so they meet up. And then just continue going with your black line. And instead of trying to do a nice straight line with the hubcap, we're just going to cover that up with the black. And then we'll only have to do our nice straight line with the silver. So now we'll go to the other one and do the same thing. Again, my hand is anchored nice and solid on the table with my hand holding my piece. I'm using one of my fingers to anchor it onto the truck. I'm starting in the tire and I'm going to merge towards where the fender and the tire meet. And by merging, you can get your line right where you want it. And then you just draw it around. And we'll grab a little more paint. And again, I'm going to start in my tire and merge towards my black. And I can just meet right up. And I can see there's some red on the tire over here. So I'm just going to bring the black line out just a little bit further towards that fender. And then we'll come back the other way just to get a little bit more. Okay, so Courtney's telling me the white balance is really messed up, so we're going to put some gray underneath here quick. So just bear with us here tonight. So we'll just try to get our color so it's not so much white background, so it's a little bit better for you guys to see. Hopefully I don't drop anything. Did that help? Still looks pretty white, don't it? 
take the map out. Oh, wait. oh. <laughs> there's a video. Oh. Yeah. Leave it on? And I'll take it off. All right, we can let that off. I just didn't want to get the thing all full of paint. All right, so we're back at it here. Yeah. Hopefully that helps a lot with the color so it ain't so white and um, hard to see. So all righty, let's get centered here again. All right, we're back at it. So we'll grab our little truck over here again. And we have that one outlined, so now we're going to switch over and do this one again. I've still got my hand anchored on the table. My other painting hand is anchored on my truck. I start in my tire and I merge over to my fender where I want them to meet. And then I just come around. And you can stop or keep going if you have to. And now I want to brush this out a little bit. And I'll do the same thing over on this side. You don't want to get your black up on your fender, but you do want it down in that groove. So it looks like it needs to come up just a little bit more over here. So we'll just start again. And we'll grab some more and I will do this other side. Again, I'm starting on my tire and I'm going to merge over to my fender right where I want the tire and the fender to meet. And just bring the brush around. Brush that out. I didn't have enough paint so I'm going to start in the tire and merge out to the fender. That way I can see where my paint is and I can pick right up where I left off and match them up real well. So is everybody going Black Friday shopping tomorrow? I'm not. Too many crowds for me and no time really. I went one year when I needed a generator for my camper, which is about, must be, two years ago already or three years yeah, and, you ordered it online. <laughs> and actually then I got to my sisters we were all going together and I was looking on on the computer and here we could order it online and have it delivered for free we didn't even need to go and stand in line to get it and then they were gone so we ordered it online quick but then we still went <laughs> so that was my one and only Black Friday experience so now um, they made the tire go all the way across, so we actually want to make this go all the way across. So I'm going to start into my tire and merge over um, to the truck here itself, where the truck meets the under or the tire meets the underneath part of my truck, and just draw that across there and join them up. And I'll fill that in using a bigger brush. I usually um, do the lining out part with the liner brush. I'm just starting in the tire, merging it over to my underbody. We'll do the same thing. Bring it right across. And brush that out a little bit. And that looks a little crooked, so we'll widen that out right there. So it looks like we got pretty clear picture, pretty good color. That's not accurate. Okay. So Cordy has two computer screens up. One is um, is like our feed that I'm seeing actually live, and then her other computer screen has the Facebook, what you guys are actually seeing. So there's a delay between the two. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So, but it's kind of nice. I can see what I'm doing, but I can't read you guys' comments because it's too far away. But I think she's watching that for you, for us. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. So Cordy says we lost some people with our camera there. So sorry about that, you guys. Um, the video will be saved to the playlist, and it will be on the YouTube channel, so you can go back and watch it when you're painting. So I got that tire trimmed out and now we'll do the back one here well good good for you Lisa save your money 
Um, we are having a Black Friday special, but we'll um, Courtney's going to tell us about that at the end of the show. So we'll have a little something going on for tomorrow. So now that's our black, our windows are gray, and our grill is gray. So I'm just going to set that aside and do the other one. Um, and then we'll come back and fill those in with a bigger brush. So again, I have my hand anchored, anchored on the table. Uh, my piece is anchored in my hand, and my painting hand is anchored onto my piece. And we're just going to draw our black and meet it up with the fender. And if you get onto your fender, you can go back and um, touch it up. I would probably wait until I'm done with all the black. And we'll come and do this one. We'll also wire our tree tonight when we're done with our trucks. The BISBOX group does have a video on how to wire your tree that I shared from the Glazer um, site, which is our supplier. So you could also refer to that, but we'll do it tonight also. The only thing you really need is a Phillips screwdriver to do that. So now we switch to the other side here, and we're going to get this tire black. So we're supposed to have another snowstorm starting sometime tomorrow. I haven't even had time to look into Saturday. And we're supposed to have a craft show Saturday, so I'm hoping it isn't too bad of a storm. Although I believe up north they were supposed to get like 27 inches, maybe in yesterday's storm. I know I was supposed to have tires put on my car yesterday and the Tires didn't get here because of the storm that was out west. Now I'm have a my little fake donut tire on there until Tuesday, so I actually had Courtney's car today. So we're just going to draw this across where the tires come underneath here. Oh, it's driving my car. Well. Your car is fine. It's just smaller than my big conversion van, but. It's fine. Oh, Tammy's painting along tonight. Oh, great, Tammy. Cordy says you're painting along. Wonderful. And Carol says hi. And hi to Carol. And hi to everyone else that's on. So looks like everybody liked the snowman themed box. So that should be fun for us to paint. And we're waiting for the molds to get here yet for our January box. Um, we may have to switch January and February around if we, they don't get here pretty darn quick. But I'm hoping they'll be here this week or early next week. And then I'm also working on orders. And I need to clean all my snowmen for the boxes. I do have the cuddled up, cleaned, and fired. Um, Sunday and Monday will be cleaning and firing after work. And Do the boxes clean fast? Um, not too bad. You know, it still takes time. I mean, there's still probably 15 to 20 minutes in each one just to clean them. And when you have 50, that kind of adds up. So we did have a request to see if um, an extra jack will fit in the box. I did bring um, Courtney two jacks that are fired tonight so she can see if two jacks will fit in the box or not. In case you wanted an extra um, jack, you can just message us and let us know. So now I have my black um, outlined on my both trucks. And now I'm actually going to switch over to a bigger brush. Uh, to fill it in. So I'm going to wash out my liner brush and I'm going to switch over to my 5-0 Royal and Langnickel round nylon brush and I'll just use that to fill in these bigger areas. It'll just go quicker and won't wear out my little liner brush. So 
So we have to do the unboxing video yet for the December box, which hopefully we can do tomorrow. Um, Cardi did post the picture, and I think she has the link with it. If you're a new, not a subscriber, and want to purchase it, or you can message us, and she'll take care of you. The link will take you right to the Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com, and we use Square to process everything, which is a secure company like PayPal. It's just a secure program. And we don't see your credit card information, but it processes it. So when you're on there, um, I think a Google Play or something comes up. We had a couple of people have trouble with that. Um, don't use that. Just stick with the square. Just check out like you normally check out on a, on a web page, a store. And you shouldn't have any problems. When you go to the Google Play, it doesn't for some reason want to check it out. And then I think that's actually leaving our site then too, right? Or not? No, it'll process right there. It'll process right to, there too, but... Um, the cart right there. If we send you an invoice, um, that'll take you to like, the square website. So... So if you do have trouble, you could um, send Cordy a message, but as long as you just check out like normal with the cart and don't go to the Google Pay, you should be fine. Um, Cordy said she did put the link in the comment if for the pre-orders if you're not uh, on the subscriber list because we do have extra boxes. We try to make extra boxes every month, so if we have new people, you can um, try it out or if Sometimes people want an extra box even. Um, that December box would make a great gift box because it's everything's all wrapped up and packaged and cute, and all you'd have to do is wrap the box that it comes in. Well, or Cordy says you could take the time and paint them and give them as gifts too. But if you have a painter, they would probably get a real joy out of opening the box with all the little goodies and things that we we do with it. So that's part of the experience of the box. It's just not getting bisque. There's the bisque and then there's the little extra finishing pieces and then there's extra pieces like um, from August through December we included two extra dry brushes. It says extra pieces as part of the package deal, kind of a good little items that you can use to make projects. So now I have that all, tires all done, but now I'm gonna go back and look at my tree and we got some little white fleas, so we're gonna get those blackened up again. They always seem to appear. Courtney's gonna try base coating tomorrow. They help me out for the craft show. So now I did get some black on my little truck there, so I'll have to cover that up. And then we'll come back and look at these tires just to make sure they're looking good. And I got a little spot there. And that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna see a spot here on the tree. I'm going to wash out my brush, and we'll put that aside, and then we can dry brush our little um, tree quick. And I'm going to use our OS 544 Rainforest Green, and we'll shake it up a little bit, and get us a drop of green. Whoop. And let's see, what are we going to use? I'm going to use our Royal and Langnickel size 5 flat dry brush. I think we need to give the camera a minute to auto Okay. You move. move, all right. And so we try it again. So Courtney thinks I'm causing some of the blurriness by moving too quick. So I have a Royal and Langnickel size 5 dry brush, a bristle dry brush. And we're going to dry brush our tree. So I have my rainforest screen, and I'm just going to brush this out in here a little bit. The autofocus. the autofocus is making it blurry. 
So that's a little wet there yet, so we'll go over on this side. And if yours is still wet, you could put the silver hubcap on or your um, gray in your windows. We could have done that too. Yep. So the door handle will get silver, then the grill will get silver, and the hubcaps will get silver. Um, the windows and the lights and the bumper. I think I did silver on the bumper too. One I did and one I didn't, so it's kind of up to you what you want to do. So one has a silver bumper and one has a white bumper. I don't know, Tammy. She's just not a crafty girl, so I don't know about that. So I'm just dry brushing my rainforest green going across my texture, just like we did with the big tree. Kind of being careful not to get it on my red, but if we do, we can touch it up. And you want to go across it instead of with it. You don't want to fill in your lines. You just want to build up your green. And let's see what else. Jason looked at the wiring to get my big kiln hooked up so we can have um, backup. And a bigger kiln as well. So hopefully I can fire one load instead of three. Do they come in like cubic sizes or? Um, I don't know if they come in cubic sizes. It's usually by inches tall and wide. Um, I think that one is, well, the door is 31 and a half inches, and I think it's like 31 and a quarter. It's just so it fit through the door. And down the basement. And then it's tall as well, so I'll have to get a, I have two cement blocks I'm going to use to stand on to load it. Canada, I'm a snowstorm. Oh, Carol's in Canada and you're having a snowstorm. Oh, yeah, I think we had like northern Wisconsin. Um, they were supposed to get like 27 inches. So and we were in northern Wisconsin last Saturday. We went to Florence <laughs> and made a wrong turn leaving and we ended up in Michigan. We got like three downs of, three miles down the road and it said, Mel, welcome to Michigan. So we had a good laugh out of that because we weren't planning on going to Michigan. But we had got a truckload of molds, um, older molds. How about your gear? Santa. That um, was a good find. They were probably molds from the 90s. Um, they were in a the place we had a house built onto a church. And I guess the people lived in the house and then turned the church into a ceramic shop. And then the molds were down in the basement of the church. It was a pretty good variety of stuff, um, although there were a lot of plates and canisters and vases and um, blinkies, the blinky things, um, some smiley things. Um, let's see, we ended up with... I guess the most unique find would be the Gare Wisconsin Cheesehead Santa. And I poured him last night and took him out of the mold today, this morning, quick. Um, we have a, a really, I got a really big owl. It's probably 20 inches tall. He'll be a, a good garden item. Let's see, what else did we get? Oh, we got six more nativity sets, so that was pretty cool because I kind of like nativity sets. Yes, yeah, so we got the Kimple, um, one that's larger, the 1700 series number. Um, we got a Doc Holiday. I would say it's a medium to small size. Um, we have the we got the Duncan large one, and I actually have that one, but mine's very worn, so we did bring that one because it's in much better condition. So that was Kimple, Doc Holiday, Duncan. Um, oh, a, a, 
there's a tiny a tiny Duncan set and then there's like the next set we got that set also it's just a little bit bigger of pieces um, the thing with those is those are nativities they always have the nativities but nobody ever has the stables but I guess a lot of people probably like the handmade stables so I have my tree pretty much as green as I wanted I just dry brush back and forth across my texture I have about one quarter of my black showing in my crevices just for nice depth on my tree and now I'm going to go to my Christmas green which is my OS 488 Duncan Christmas green so we'll shake that up a little bit let's see what else do we have we have some oh we gotta shake it up more I got oil in there um, we have a we got two Native American angels, one that's standing and one that's kneeling. Those were very nice. Um, two Native American like eagle feathers. One has a chief on it and one has an eagle on it. And I don't have any Native American pieces, so I thought I'd get a couple. So we have our Christmas green, and I'm just going to use my same brush. I don't want to wash my brush out. I want to keep my brush dry. Um, we got some Christmas ornaments. I did get one canister set. It's the only set I have. It's the Kyoto um, Four Seasons set. Although we didn't get the lid for it, and I'm hoping I can purchase the lid or I'll have to make lids. Um, each one has like a water type scene on it. One has a covered bridge over water. One has a water wheel um, building. Um, one has a lighthouse and then there was another one so I'm just dry brushing my Christmas green over the top of my rainforest green and I want this about a quarter less or a third less than what the rainforest green was because we still want to see some of our rainforest green and our black So I thought it was, even though it wasn't a plain canister set, it, it really isn't a dated uh, canister set either because it's a scenery with the four seasons. So each one has can be painted as a different season. So I kind of like that idea. And then they're all bigger canisters too. They're not like the four different sizes. They're th it's three, three bigger sized ones. Huh? They're all the same size. They're the same size, yep. Yeah. That's the way it looked anyway. The molds are the same sizes. I didn't get a chance to like you grab them with. Right? Because <laughs> we were kind of running out of time. So um, we I think we got some more animals. Um I got like three Santas. Oh, well, some Halloween that, like, stuff, some pumpkins. Oh, we had a, um, it's the Doc Holiday. It's like a nature scene with um, corn and like a stump, and it's got two quails on it. Big. It's big. It's probably 18 inches tall. But we have the pheasant one already. And so I seen the quail, and I looked at the quail, and I walked away from the quail and debated about the quail. And then when we were going to leave, it's like, oh, just get it. So I did get it. So now I have our Mako SS. 376 lime burst and we're going to highlight the tips of our tree with that so again that's the Mako SS 376 lime burst and Courtney does have the paint list with the videos always and it's also should be in the BISBOX group so if you're not a member of the BISBOX group you can request to join that um, you don't have to be getting the BISBOXes to be a member it's just where we post stuff pertaining to the BIS boxes. So again, I'm using my same brush and going into my lime burst. I did not go in the water and wash it out. I want to keep my brush dry. And now we'll do a, about a quarter with our lime burst just to get our tips um, nice and light. And then we'll leave our, then you have your um, Christmas green and then you have your rainforest green and your black. So it's just nice graduated color, just like a tree would be shaded if you went outside and looked at a tree in the back of a truck or on the 
in the field and then the top of it we'll we'll do the whole top because all of that the light would be hitting this whole top and I believe Courtney will be posting more of these trucks on our Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bis too if you want more of them um, or you can message us because she's not sure when she'll have time to post the trucks but we do have more of them and you could do like a six pack or a three pack to help shave on shipping because um, they don't weigh much so the shipping wouldn't be much from one compared to three so now on the bottom I'm just going to do just a little bit maybe about a quarter of an inch just want a nice graduation of change here I want more of the lime burst on the tip and then less and less as it gets towards the center because it would be darker there so that's our tree and I have more on the tip here because that's the light you want to think about where the light would be hitting your tree and it the whole tip of that tree would be getting the sunlight hitting it so you want more on the, the top side here so that's our tree he's looking pretty good and that's about where I'd like it and of course anytime when I'm painting something that's just how I do it and you can do it any way you'd like you don't have to do it my way so now we're going to switch back to our trucks and I think we'll do the white last we'll get some of our gray oh Courtney I don't have gray so I'll go to silver huh yeah we're supposed to have gray um, oh we don't have gray on there oh I must have just used silver never well no we had to use gray on the windows oh I guess we missed gray on our color list you guys sorry about that so we used I used gray on the windows Courtney can you go grab a gray it's just like a probably ash maybe so you just want to use like a medium gray on your windows not sure how we missed that but in the meantime I'm going to switch to our UM ultra metallic 956 silver again that's our Duncan ultra metallics UM 956 and it's silver and we'll do that on our hubcaps and on our um, bumpers and on our um, doorknobs so I'm going to actually use my liner brush for this and that's my Royal Majestic 4595-50 liner and I'm going to draw my paint brush through my paint turning it kind of load it up and get that point and I want to anchor my hand again on the table and my piece in my hand and we'll just get our little silver hubcaps here so if you don't have gray you could take and make a little pile of white and then add just a drop of black to it until you get the shade of gray that you want for your windows and I can actually do that next and show you how to do that in case you don't have the gray um, so we apologize for missing that on our list so yes this is our we're going into our sixth month um, so whenever you're mixing a color you want to use your lightest color you want to have that pile of that and then you want to add your dark color to it so we'll do that for the gray since it wasn't on the list but otherwise you, you just want like a medium to a light gray for your windows so I'm just putting the silver on my hubcaps Courtney's tearing things up over there the way it sounds got her all frustrated over that paint it's just just paint well oh she said it started already with the wire not having it plugged into the router that's all right we'll make it so we're just gonna outline our hubcaps here with our silver and the silver can take a couple of coats but we'll do the one coat and then brush it out 
And we'll, I'm actually going to switch to the other truck so I don't smear that while i am got it flipped over and get my big fingers in it. We'll let that one dry and then we'll go back to it. So I'm starting in my hubcap just like with my black and I'm going to merge over to the black to outline it. Start in the hubcap and merge over to the black. So it's, it's been super busy here. Um, horrendous, actually, Courtney says. I'd have to agree. Um, this next week is probably going to be the worst week. We have a craft show Saturday. We have the boxes to box up and get shipped on Thursday. And then another craft show on Saturday. And then we're kind of through. Um, plus our orders. And then we'll be through our... Um, hectic week, although the orders will be, it's going to take right up to Christmas to get orders done. And I'm not taking orders anymore because we're, um, we've, they've been full for a while. So um, anytime you have a handmade item, you have to give that person four to six weeks to um, get those pieces done because there's just a lot of work that goes into a handmade piece. So, so I have a lot of them poured. They just they'll just need to be cleaned and fired and then painted. I have a few more to pour yet. So I have our little silver on our hubcaps, and I'm going to switch back to the other one because now that should be pretty dry, and we'll do the other side of it. And I'm just starting in my hubcap and merging over to my black tire, and I can just round it right out. If you wanted to do white walls, you could go ahead and do that next. Um, those um, take a lot more time and patience. There isn't a white or there isn't an indented line as guidance, um, but you can do it. You just got to keep touching it up and until you get it nice and even and it looks good. Yeah, we were going to try to do a circle temporal, but we never had time for that. Um, Probably could be a January thing that we could add add on the website at some point. I did notice that the larger truck does have the indent for the white wall. So that would be a lot easier to paint the white wall because you have a line embossed into the tire itself when they made the mold to go by as a guide. Saturday? That was a different, you know. So I'm going to switch back to our other truck and do his little um, hubcaps here. Sometimes the hubcaps were the colors of the trucks too, so you wouldn't have to do the silver if you didn't want to. Um, like I had started saying, I think when we got cut off, that you don't have to do things the way I do them. You're welcome to do them any, any way you'd like. This is just a base for the, the boxes and just a guide to go by if, you, if you're not able, if you're like new to painting and have no idea where to start. It's just one way, one way of doing thing, things. There's always more ways than one way. So this was just the way that I picked to do this particular piece, just like for the December box, we're going to do the snowman with the color wash. You wouldn't have to color wash them either. You could just base coat them and dry brush them. You could underglaze them and have them fired. So now we'll um, switch back to our other truck, and now we're going to do our um, grill. And there's no actual indent on the top of the hood here, so you kind of have to um, just put that in yourself. You just want it nice and even and straight and you probably wouldn't have to do the silver grill either if you didn't want to it's all it's all a personal preference so we're going to just bring that down alongside our um, lights and if you want a silver bumper you could have a silver bumper if you don't you don't have to if you used fire on silver, how would that work? 
So if you wanted to use fire on silver, Courtney asked if you use silver, what would you do? After the piece was bisque fired to cone 04, which all our bisque is, in case someone would want to do that, you would have to uh, paint on a clear glaze where you want your high your fired silver. And then you would fire the clear glaze on. Usually it's a cone 06. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing a load of those because I have a order two orders for fired silver on trucks. Um, then once it's fired, you would take your silver and paint it on. And the fired on silver is very thin. It's thin like ink. You paint that on where your clear glaze was, which would be where you want your silver, for example, on the bump on the grill here. And then it gets fired again in the kiln. I think it's 017 or 018. And I haven't fired silver in a while. And then it would be it would come out and it would be all shiny silver. And then you would um, con just continue on and paint your acrylic stain out where where you want it. You just bump it up up to your fired silver. So so I just want to look at my grill here and make sure it looks good. So I think this one we're actually going to take our silver down onto the bumper just to show you, you can do one with and one without. Uh, Mother of Pearl, if you wanted Mother of Pearl, you would do that um, after your silver is fired on because then that's fired a little bit, that's fired cooler than the silver. So then you would have an, another firing. Yep. So now I don't want to get my fingers in that paint, but I want to anchor him down here. So I actually have my arm anchored on the table, and I have this other hand holding it, and I'm going to come across here to try to get a straight line. And I want to brush that out. And if your line isn't straight, you can go back and straighten it out, or you can touch it up with the red if you get your silver where you don't, where it needs to be red. But I really have this painting hand anchored onto the table, so it works pretty good. I tend to want to anchor it onto the truck just because it's not out in the air there then. The silver? Yeah. It covers pretty good, yep. It'll take probably two coats, though. It's a nice product without having to fire it. Yeah, it looks like actual metal. Yeah, it's got a nice shine to it. So then we'll set that one aside. We'll come back to these hubcaps and see if they need a little more paint on them. Let's get a little more. And you just want to paint it out so you don't have no puddles. And then this one we have to do our, oh, I just stuck my finger in my silver. So I have it on my wheel, I'll have to touch that up. So we'll paint out the grill on this one and I'm anchoring my um, truck on the table and my hand on my truck. So those chrome grills were always a big thing back then. I don't know that they are now so much. They're probably just black, right? So we'll just get our grill done here. Oh, we got a uh, Donna's noggin, snowball noggin mold on Saturday, which was good because the one I had was 
pretty worn and I was actually going to take the take them off of the store the dot com page so we'll have um, new ones of those because the mold is pretty new and then we I also have the mini dog and noggins snowballs which those are really cute too um, Cordy said she'll post that I don't have them painted I don't think but they make good um, snowballs for on Christmas for ornaments for Christmas trees and so they're like sitting on the shelf I like to put a hole in them and then hang them with a silver string um, and then just sell them as a Christmas ornament they sell quite well that way so we'll let that guy drive we'll come back to our other truck touch up our little hubcaps here a little bit And look at our grill. Looks like I can still I can see a little red through there yet, so we'll get a little more on there. Take your piece. So we got that looking. Huh? Courtney's having technology trouble tonight? Yeah. What happened now? Oh, so now I'm going to um, put a little silver on my doorknob here. And you don't have to do that either if you don't want to, but it seemed like those old trucks always had a lot of chrome on them. You could even do the running, the running board here in the um, silver chrome if you wanted to. So we'll do our other doorknob here quick. And we'll let that one sit and we'll come back and do this doorknob on this guy. So it's kind of nice to have the two. You can go back and forth while the other one's drying. I, I usually paint batches like that. Do all the reds and then all the blacks and then all the silvers. So we got that one done. You could also do the bumper on them in the silver. We just did the grills. And I'll touch this grill up a little bit. So I can see my red through the silver there. So we'll set that aside and I'm going to wash out my brush. And that, those usually take a little bit more to get that silver all out of there. And now we're going to, since we didn't have gray in our box, we're going to make some gray. But I need white. So I'm going to use my Duncan OS431. Or if you have a medium gray, um, like the OS474, kind of a light gray, that'll work fine too. But we'll make, make our gray since it's not in the box. And i got to shake this up good. And when you're mixing a color, you want to make sure you have enough to complete your project because you won't probably be able to match it up so easy. And you want to use the light color as your base. So I'm going to make sure I have more than enough. So that's my white. And I'm just going to take some of my black, my OS476 black. And we're going to shake that. And you just want to add a drop at a time. And I'm going to use, actually going to use my liner brush because it has a nice, actually kind of like a little palette on the end of it with a slant. And you can mix that up. And we'll make our own gray. You can do this with any of the acrylics, yep. The thing is you just want to mix enough of it. So you can paint whatever you're painting. And then it's better to use, you'll end up with a smaller batch if you start with your light color. If you start with your dark color first, if you had a pile of that big of your dark color, it would take half the bottle of your white um, to get it light enough. So it's better to start with your light color and then just add a little bit of dark to it. So there we go. We have ourselves a nice light gray. I'm going to wipe my handle off. 
And you can see it's actually pretty, it's a little bit lighter than um, the gray in the bottle, but that's okay. We're, we're good with it. If you wanted it a little darker, you could just add another drop, like half a drop of the um, black. So we'll just put that aside. And now we're going to do our windows. And then I'm going to use my liner brush. And I'm going to anchor my piece on my table and my hand on my piece. And we just want to line out our windows here. And I do did paint them all, just the whole red, instead of having part red and part white, because it'll just cover more evenly. That way your gray will be the, your top coat will be the same shade. It won't be lighter and darker because of the color underneath. So it's, it's easier just to paint the whole thing red and then come back and line out the gray. I'm just going to where the indents are in, in the windows on the, in the mold of the truck. And we're just going to brush that out. So even if you don't have the color you need, you can, you can try to mix up your own color. And just start with a little bat, you know, the, your light color and add your dark color to it. So now we'll start line out our windshield here let's see what else is going on too much Courtney says waiting for the January molds may have to switch out to the February. We'll see here because um, actually I need to be start pouring those here pretty sh quickly. Um, the boxes will ship Thursday, right? Yeah, I think January, but this falls on Sunday. So they'll probably ship on Monday then. Yeah. So we were, she was just talking that the fifth will fall on a Sunday in January. So the boxes will ship on Monday the 6th. So if you're new to the subscription, the boxes come out. Um, we try to do, the plan is to try to do the unboxing video around the 15th to the 20th, but we got really behind here. And then um, if you're not a subscriber, you can message that you want a box or you can buy a pre-order box on the Brenda's brushstrokesandbisks.com. If you're a subs you want to be a subscriber, there's a subscription box you can buy versus the one-time box and then once you're on the subscription list you will automatically get an invoice on the first of the month sent to you by email and then you will have till the fourth of the month at midnight central time to pay and then on the fifth we um, box everything up and ship it out you get a tracking confirmation sent by email and it may not be on the 5th because it's been taking the whole day into the evening just to get everything boxed up and shipped and and it takes quite a bit of time to go through and copy and paste those tracking numbers so you may get that the next day but basically you get an invoice on the 1st you pay by the 4th they ship on the 5th um, depending upon your location they ship pretty darn quick um, they deliver pretty quick. Um, we do have boxes going to Canada and Australia. Not Australia. Yeah, Australia. Canada and Australia. Um, we haven't had any problems with breakage as far as we know. No one's left. No one's um, had any issues so far. So we try to package them up really, really well. Um, we did have one box where we missed the paint, but the lady left us no, and Courtney took care of it right away. So... She's kind of the computer part of it, and I'm the pouring, cleaning, firing part of it. Painting. painting. Oh, painting too. Yeah, I guess that's kind of important. And then on um, those boxes shipped on the fifth, and then hopefully you have them in time. Well, and you everyone usually has. Then that usually that following Thursday, then we begin painting what was in that month's box on our Thursday night lives at seven central time. 
Um, may, it could be the week after. It all depends how the how it falls. Um, where we are with the box, a box may take longer than usual. I think our scarecrows took a extra week. There was more detail in them. The snowmen actually um, paint up fairly quick. Um, you do dry brush after the color washing, so that takes a little bit of time. But then we um, paint them for four weeks. And it takes, it's been taking the four weeks. It's actually been working out really well. You could have three to three to five pieces of greenware or bisque in your box. The bisque has a dollar value and the extras have a dollar value and the shipping has a dollar value. Um, your, that way it's always consistent. Your box, unless I go over budget, we don't go under budget, I can tell you that much. Um, we, you definitely are getting your money's worth, I can tell you that. And then we do our painting and answer questions. If people have questions, you can send pictures and I will can guide you through it how to uh, maybe fix something if you need fixing or if you just need help. That's what we're here for. It's part of our, it's part of the subscription. So now I'm, and then there's the Brenda's brush strokes and bisque. Um, if you, there's a, there's a bisque box group that's part of our um, page too. And if you join that, you just have to request to join the group and then we post, Courtney will post things in there about the BIS box, like the paint list, and or I'll, I and I tend to post things in there too, uh, little tips and things. So. And you don't have to be a subscriber to be a member of the group. You just um, request to join. So. Um, sometimes Courtney will post the, like a flash sale in there too. We had one of those earlier. So now I have my gray windows all lined out and I will switch to our other truck and do those quick. Well, I don't know how quick it's going to be, but the switch might be quick. <sighs> she says we're not shopping. We got plenty of time. No, we shopped last week when we got our um, camera, but now the camera is on sale for Black Friday along with the microphone. So I'm debating if we shouldn't get it anyway so we have a backup. But I guess we got to decide that by morning. Can it be ordered online or do you got to go to the store? That will probably be the deciding factor right there. It probably wouldn't hurt to have a, they actually have the camera and the microphone for the price of just the microphone. So, so we'll, her and I will discuss that, I guess, when we get get done here tonight. The audio is okay, it's still echoing. What? The audio is okay, it's still echoing. Yeah, she thinks the, um, the microphone might help the echoing that we have, but I'm in a hard hardwood floor room, so that might be part of it too. And we're going to switch now to our windshield. And again, I'm just outlining it where the indents are in the, in the truck from the mold. It's um, kind of like coloring in a coloring book. It's actually not as hard as it looks if you haven't done it before. Um, Cardi asks if it's relaxing for me. It is. I could do this all night. And sometimes I tend to do it all night. Once I get started, it's I just lose track of time completely. <laughs> so, And then once in a while it gets frustrating too if something doesn't turn out the way you want it. So Cardi says she gets frustrated with it. Let's see, we're planning different projects and techniques for next year, too. So that should be fun for you guys. Um, kind of a learning. So we're, hopefully anyone that's new, they're, they're learning. 
and maybe someone that's been in it for years, you're learning a different way to do maybe the same thing. Maybe I just do it diff a little differently than what you learned. Um, so, Cordy asked if there's other techniques besides color washing. Yep. Um, there's antiquing, which we're going to do that. I think the February box, there's a um, birdhouse in there. And I think we're actually going to do a marbling technique on that, as well as um, we're going to be using metallic rub ons. And that box, the metallic rub ons, is actually going to be your extra, which that alone has a $9.99 value to it. And that will be included in, in that box. And, and then you can use that on other projects as well. So it's a full size product and you'll have, I don't know if there's six or eight colors in, in the package. Um, Cordy says I can't give it all away. But it's um, so in February we will be doing a um, it's a marbling technique where we'll use our sponge that you guys are getting next month for the color washing. We'll use that same sponge. It'll be stained, but that doesn't matter. You'll just wash it out so it's clean. And I think we're going to do the birdhouse with the marbling technique, and as well as the uh, metallic rub-ons on the uh, birds and on the roof of the birdhouse. So I try to try to think of different techniques to keep keep this being a learning learning thing. And there's always new techniques out there, which some of them are old techniques, but they're um, probably hopefully new to some of you. Um, I think one of the box, maybe the Easter box. I don't remember if we were going to do like the shaving cream technique or the blowing the bubble soap bubbles. I don't remember. We have to, have to, as soon as we get through Christmas here, get all of those more. Um, we just we need to get them more um, defined or finalized, I should say. We just have a Excel sheet with like our ideas on it, and then we need to finalize what we're actually going to do and what we actually need and um, the details, the final details. If we did the shaving cream technique, we probably wouldn't be shipping the shaving cream. You'd probably have to um, go purchase that yourself, even though we try to include everything pretty much that you need in your boxes, except for like the sealers. The um, shaving cream is an aerosol, so that's where the, the issue comes in with the shipping. But you can go like if you have a dollar fee, they usually have dollar shaving cream. That's all you need. You could also use Cool Whip, but I don't think we want to ship Cool Whip either. So we'll decide if that's what if we do that technique or not. We um we could maybe do the marbling. We'll come up with some. Just try to do different techniques here and there, and different projects. And if there's something you guys think you want to learn or hear about just um, post it on the video feeds because Courtney and I both watch those and we'll or send them messages are better if you send a message that's better we can keep track of them better um, comments are hard to they can get lost in the comments so we're just gonna keep get another coat of this gray on here Get our windows all good. So it's looking pretty good. And we'll go back and check the other one now. And he needs a little more. How are we doing on time? but we lost like 15 minutes with our video hiccup when we started. Okay, so Cordy says it's 8.20. I guess we're going to go over a little bit because we lost some time with our connection there. And I don't have to drive home either, so. I'm staying here tonight, and then Cordy's actually coming to help me tomorrow. 
because I have a flat tire and they wouldn't fix the tire, so I have to get new tires. But the snowstorm slowed the tires down and they didn't get here yesterday, so now I'm waiting till Tuesday to get tires. Chalk would be fun. Um, well, chalk would be fun. Well, we, we have something to do with chalk going on, too. So we have that all figured out, too. Huh? Um, it took a lot of hunting down to get the chalk is right, and the chalk um, will actually be the extra in one of your boxes um, next year for 2020. So, yep, there's all kinds of planning going on already for next year. So, yep, chalk is one of them. So I'm going to go back to my um, barnyard red and just touch up a little bit here because I have a couple spots where I don't want a black in one spot. And so I just want to look up my little piece. And um, oh, so look at there, I got silver all over. I don't know when I did that. Let's see if we can wipe that off so it isn't such a glob. So that means there's silver. Oh, I got silver on my hand is what the problem is. So I'm going to wipe my hand off here. Hmm? No, it's okay. So now i got to touch up where i got silver all over. So here we go. Touch up. So I'm actually going to stick my finger inside him, and then that kind of helps not get stuff all over. Oh, I forgot our headlights. So we'll touch up our silver that I got all over. And anywhere else if you need to touch up where black got on your red. So you kind of want to do a final touch up here. And I'm just looking them over. So even like if you look on the window, I, you can see that my gray got a little bit past the window and onto my um, where it should be the red of the truck. So I'm going to fill that in. So now you can see how much better that looks. So you do want to go back and look at your pieces to make sure your colors are meeting at the right position on your piece. So see how much better that looks now that that gray isn't up onto the what should have been the red of the truck. And let's take our fingers out and spin them around. And like my corners here aren't real sharp, so I'm just going to see if I can fix that up a little bit. So you want to pay attention to all those little details. We'll sit him down and we'll come back to our other one here. So now I have red or black up on my red here. And a little bit of black. We can nudge that just a little bit closer to our tree. And at the top of the window right in the corner here is past the window and it's up onto the truck part of it, the trim. So we're just going to straighten that out a little bit and that just makes that look nicer. And we got a little bit of green on our truck bed, so we'll cover that up. Oh, now I got my paper and my green. So now we'll look at this side. Get a little bit of black on the fender. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to wash that out. And I'm going to go back to my gray and get my little um, headlights in the gray here. What time do we have to get up tomorrow, Courtney? She says she's an early riser. I don't. I think she means like, what? 
what's the early riser? My body wakes up at 5.30. 5.30. I'm not getting up at 5.30 tomorrow. <laughs> uh, 7 is okay. Then we can get on the road back to my place. And we'll fire the kiln. And we'll get some painting going on to get some stuff done for Saturday. Your sister? Um, I think she's off. She's going Black Friday shopping. So we have our little headlight done. What? No. So we're just going to do our little headlight here. And you can see the indent in, in the truck where your headlight is. So I'll probably pour molds. Whoops, there goes the brush. That's why the aprons are good. And we do have uh, more of the aprons. They're on the Brenda's Brushstrokes and Biz.com. They aren't up. Oh, she says they're not on there, but you could message her. Uh, so they're actually really nice. They have adjustable straps on them, and they wash up. They come out just like new. So a local shop in town doesn't play. So she's, I don't know if you guys can hear her. She says the local shop in town made made them up for us, so we're real happy with them. So we have those, our little gray on our headlights. And now we'll do our little gray on our, these headlights. I've also seen them done with a light yellow. Kind of makes them look like they're lit up. I don't know if I like the yellow. But it's up to you. We're not, we're not picky. No. Um, the bigger truck, I did actually cut one of the, cut the headlights out on the last one that I poured. I'm hoping that the it has the tree in it, so I'm hoping it like lights it up. The what? One of like the Biscuit Port people have a little teeth truck. The what? One of like the Biscuit Port people mm -hmm. have a little teeth truck where a light does fit in it. Oh. Like Miko lights. Mm -hmm. Well, I put a hole in mine where the clip light's going to fit through, so. The one with the tree in it, anyway. Yeah, that's the Miko truck, those little guys. Yeah. So we got our headlights just about done here, and you want them nice and even. I'm going to compare one to the other. Alrighty. So he's looking pretty good. We're going to, um, i got to touch up some black the way it looks. And I need a little bit of black. So that's why these guys are putsy. You kind of got to come back and touch, touch up a little bit here and there. Just because they're small and you end up touching. Brush that out. Got a little gray in my brush there. Put some more black on it. And I'll put him on his side and let him dry. So look at this one. And his black is looking good. He looks good. We're going to set him aside. And now we're actually going to switch over to our tree base while those dry. And we're going to wire that so you guys can see that. Uh, let's see. So that was our gift inside your... Um, we painted the tree base last time. And I um, didn't get time to finish and put the snow and the silt glitter on mine, but that's what that was looking like. And you had a package in your box, <coughs> excuse me, which is our thank you to everyone. Um, and that has the kit in it for the tree. It's not the pinch light, it's the kit, the tree kit. And then they're all labeled to match with the inventory. And you don't want to lose your little pieces. So you'll have your cord, and it has the um, switch on it, so you can shut it off and on without having to unplug it, which is nice. Um, you have your C7 light bulb, 
a little um, bolt here and some washers and a nut and then your little um, receptacle parts you want to pull this cardboard up and you want to get your tree base and you want to feed feed your wires through the little hole and then um, some people will put a little knot in here and that keeps that from pulling pulling back out putting tension on your cord so we're going to do that and I'm just going to tie it just a little knot like that and you want to have enough oh say four to well that's about six inches to fit up through your hole and now you're going to look at this as though so your parts the last part is your light and your light fits into your socket um, you'll have a uh, the nut, your metal washer, your rubber washer, then your um, bolt, and then this rubber washer. So we're going to start with our bottom um, nut, and then we'll go to our metal washer, and then to our rubber washer, and they're just going on the wire and then we're going to go to our the bolt and we still have our rubber washer and our socket and our light left we're going to push that through that hole so it's just up in there and now we're going to turn it over actually I'm going to go back I'm going to turn my nut on to my little bolt so you can see it's just turned on to it and I can actually bring it right back out so you can see that so it's turned right on to it maybe a quarter inch and you have your metal washer and your rubber washer and we'll put it back through and then that will bring that snug up to the bottom and it's going to be a little unhandy here for a minute and now you want to look at your cords and one has a silver tip on it and one has a black tip on it so I'm trying to see if you can see that so this one on the right has the silver and the one on the left has the black and you can have it either way but that's what I'm looking at so now when you look at your cord one has a like a brass or gold and one has a silver so the silver one you want to put the silver cord on and the brass one you want to put the black so we're going to feed our cord up inside that and it's going to um, split each way and this, and this is probably the most hardest part but it's not hard you just split them each way so I have one on each side now and you want to pull that up in there and then you want to take a Phillips screwdriver which just fell apart on me so we'll turn that out just enough to get your um, wire underneath there it's fine Courtney and it's, I just have a screwdriver a Phillips end screwdriver and now I'm going to take my um, I have my wire up inside there I have my little screws loose enough and I want to take that wire I'm going to fit it up a little more so you want your white, the white plastic coating about up to the end of the bracket there and you want to wrap that wire around that so it's nice and tight underneath there. And then I'm just going to take my screwdriver and turn it down. So now that turned out a little bit so I'm going to push it back under there and you want it nice and snug. So now we'll turn it. Oh, and I messed up and it put our washer under there so we have, we're going to take it back off so you want to remember that washer so we're just going to pull it back out which is good because now you guys see that you can just so I'm going to fit um, put that back through my hole and I want to put this other rubber washer on top and that can just hang out until we um, actually 
we're going to put this back through. And we want the silver and the gold on one silver on one side, the black on the other side. And you kind of have to have them turned out like little horns so that they'll go through those. It'll come out. Now it came out. And now I can actually hold that one down with my thumb. Now I can bend this one back and then bend it back up there. And now I'm going to bring my, I'm going to take, actually I'm going to take this bolt back off on the bottom. So I have two kinds of these and this is, um, so now my little bolt, my um, bolt has its nut off and I can, I'm going to feed this up into my, the bottom of the socket, the receptacle, and I'm turning on the inside with my hand to thread that up in there, up into the electrical part, the receptacle part. There's threads in there and that'll catch. And I have it turned about well, just, just so it's coming through about an eighth of an inch. And now I can put my bolt back down, or my nut, and I can turn this back on. You want to attach the bottom one last, otherwise your whole wire, is, the whole wire and the top is going to turn and it's going to get all twisted up. So you want to add this, tighten this one up last until it, it's just nice and snug. Now it's nice and snug. So now I can take my wire and I can still pull this up or down in there. And I think I want it to go just a little bit further down. And I can get that underneath there. And I'm going to hold my wire and just turn that down. And then we'll come to the other side. And we want to get the, so this is the black tipped one underneath the gold. And you want it nice and tight in there. And then you can turn that down. And you can tighten that nut up so that it's, this is, the receptacle itself isn't turning. And then if this electric cord, if you had too much in there, you can tighten your knot up. So there is your electric all wired. And this is nice and solid. And then you can take your little black um, or little cardboard piece and line up the little groove to go over that. And that just helps support it. And then you can turn your light bulb in, and your tree is wired. And it'll just sit right on there. So we have our tree wired. What? Well, it's okay, because we're fine. So then you have your switch, and you can just turn your switch to turn it off and on. Courtney would have to get a cord to wire it, but we're fine, because we want to get our trucks done too yet. So that's all there is to that. It's just up in there. You feed it through. Hmm? That's okay. So, and you can use the night light bulbs, or you could even use the C7 um, Christmas colored bulbs if you wanted to change colors. So there you go. You're wired. And now we're gonna. I don't. Yeah, they do, but they're more expensive. She asked if they change color, or you can buy color changing cords, and yes, you can. So now with our trucks, we antiqued the truck without the tree, and he's a little darker than the truck with the tree, you can see. But they both started out the same color red. So we're going to antique our tree quick. And what I'm going to do is take my black that I have here. And I have some um, black already on my, I'm just going to flip this over. You can make a little puddle, or you can put in a, in a little, if you have a little plastic container, but I 
I'm just going to take some black and then I'm going to take my water and I'm going to dip my brush in the water and kind of thin out this a little bit. And I'm going to need my sponge. Hmm? We didn't have a sponge in this box, no. But you could use a sponge or you could use a piece of uh, a rag, like a t-shirt. Do you have like a t-shirt rag or a little cotton? Um, just a piece of cotton, like a dish towel, old dish towel or old t-shirt. And so what I want to do is take my black and I'm just going to brush it on this whole thing. And it doesn't have to be a real... Um, solid. You just want it brushed on. So you can see I'm just brushing it on. I actually dipped in my water to thin it out a little bit more. And I'm just getting it in all the little crooks and crannies. Plenty big, yep. And we'll get the bottom here. And it gets kind of messy with your fingers, so if you don't like your fingers dirty, you could probably use a, um, some gloves. So I just thinned my black a little bit with um, water. And you just brush your black or whatever antiquing color you want. You could use different colors. Um, black is just usually a, it's a good color. So you can see my hands get pretty nasty here. But that washes off. So I just have my whole little truck covered in black. I'm going to brush out my brush. And now Cordy gave me just a little piece of t-shirt material here. And I'm going to um, dip that in my water. And I'm, I just wrung it out really well. And now you can, I'm going to actually wipe my fingers off here. So this is antiquing. And I'm going to you just want to wipe off as much as you don't as as you want. You can leave a lot on, or you can leave a little on, and it's um, basically staying in the creases. So I'm going to stick my fingers up in there now, and I'm just going to wipe across, kind of like dry brushing. You wipe across your textures, and it's just leaving the black. You can leave a lot or a little. It's totally up to you. And I'm still using my same cloth. I didn't wipe it out yet. Hmm? Oh, Courtney says I'm creeping down to come back up. So you just want to wipe off as much as you want. Leave it as antique as old looking as you want. Like you could leave a lot on there. And, and your rag will have more. Like there's more here and there's less here. If you want more wiped off, move to a cleaner area. If you want less wiped off, go back to your dirty area and you can kind of adjust how much it's wiping off. And if you need to, you can wash your rag out. No, this is good. So that's, you just wipe, wipe it off. You're kind of getting the high spots and letting it into the creases. And we forgot our back bumper, so we're just going to, so you can just wipe off as much as you want, leave as much as you want on. Same here with the window. Um, yes, you, you wouldn't want to um, let that on until tomorrow. You'd want to, as soon as you paint it on and have it covered, you'd want to wipe it off. You wouldn't want to wait for an hour and if you have a big project, so now i got some gray on there. I'll have to cover that up later. Um, where was I at? If you have a big project, like um, say the Christmas tree, the big our Christmas tree that we did, you'd probably only do half of it at a time. So as it's drying, I can see that there's um, some black left on there, and that's perfect. Now I have my little silver... Actually, I'll just leave, um, I must have got silver or gray on my fingers and it's on my truck. I'm, I'm just going to put snow on there. I'm not going to worry about it. So he's he's looking how I want him. Um, kind of antiqued, but not too much. 
just a little bit in the crack, cracks. So now you can see how, mu how much darker he got than the other one. So we would then um, seal him, spray him with your spray sealer. And we'll, we would do the same thing with this truck, spray it with your spray sealer. And then we would come back with our snow and our glitter. Let's see, we have snow and glitter here. And you had the snow and the glitter in your boxes. Right, we're done painting them. We're just to the finishing point. So, yep, so it's painted out. They're just basically painted out. Um, the tree was painted out. The truck with the tree was painted out. The truck without the tree was painted out, but then it was antiqued with black. If you wanted to um, dry brush them, I would probably paint the whole thing black and then just dry brush it with the colors, yep. I would probably start with the rust and then go to the red. Um, so then we would take our snow. So you would spray it with your spray sealer. I used um, the satin one on here that has just a little bit of a shine um, versus the matte, which is the former porcelain. I wanted it to have a little bit of shine, but I didn't use the gloss so that it was super shiny. So you'd spray them with your sealer, both of them, and then you can take your snow, just like we did with the tree, and you have plenty of snow. And then your little cloth, you can actually wash that out, rinse it out, and it'll be stained, but you can save that and reuse that for antiquing always. Um, next month, you'll actually have a, you can also use a sponge. Courtney took the sponge. But next, you can also use the sponge and we're including that in next month's box, so you'll have a sponge to do, too. Sometimes I, I do like the cloth better, um, but a sponge works well, too. So then we would, after he's sealed, you would take your, you can take a brush, or if you have one of the brushes that have the angle on the bottom, you can use that as your palette and dip in your snow. And like where I had my gray here, I could just put that snow right on there. And then you just go and put your snow wherever it is you want it. And then you can take your glitter. And I usually like to have a paper plate. Um, sure. And then I put my piece on my paper plate, and then that will collect my um, glitter. And then the same with your tree. Just put your snow wherever, wherever and however much you want it. And you just kind of drag it on there. Kind of use this as um, the brush. If you have a brush handle with that um, nice little flat thing, you can use that. If you don't have that, you could use a popsicle stick. You could use a um, plastic knife would work good, or even your kitchen knife will work. A brush will work, too. I usually put it right on the top of the tree, too. So you can put however much of this on it you want, wherever you want it. And then I'll usually take a... Paper plate. Yes, yeah, spray, seal your trucks first with your aerosol sealer. Yep. And then I'll take my glitter and then I'll put it over a paper plate because then I can pour it back into my um, container. And then you just sprinkle your glitter on. And then you can dump it on there and then that you can actually take that then and put it back into your can container. So then you would let this um, dry overnight or a couple hours and then you can take and add your pin lights and we had um, you had your large pin lights for your tree and then you have a bag of mini pin lights which is for your little truck ornament and you would put them in just like you did with the with the tree use your um, I like to use the E6000 but you want your snow to dry before you do this so you put your E6000 in your hole, and then you just stick your little pin lights in, in the holes. And then for the hanger, we'll go through that quick, too. So I, I like to use the string hangers. And in your free brush um, container was a little green wire, and this is just a florist wire that we folded in half. And then you also have the... Um, the ornament string wire that's in there 
this part of your package and it has a nice little knot tied in it already and I usually put some E6000 right at the tip of this or you could use your hot glue or you could use tacky glue or Elmer's glue then I'll take my um, florist wire and I'll hook it through there and then I'll kind of push these guys together and I'll look inside my truck and there's one bigger hole right at the top of the tree here and you can fish that through that hole so I don't always like the uh, metal hangers that the little U hooks that go into the greenware I kind of like the string better so now I'm just I have my string on my um, wire and I would have some glue on the end of here and I would just feed that through there and pull it up and then you have your nice hanger for your ornament that's all there is to it and you can save your wire and you can use that if for other um, projects so there is how your nice little truck would hang then so that's just nicer than that little wire you um, you hook that goes into the greenware. I just like the strings better on my ornaments, um, especially with the tree here. But on on almost all my ornaments, if I can do the string, I'll do the string versus the little U hook. Now um, putts, our retro putts that's in our next box. It, 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 I thought it might be kind of hard for you guys to fish that through there. So I did put those the little U hook. I don't know if you can see that, the U hook is in his hat. And then you could just tie the silver string through there. And did we, in, well, I'm not going to say that. We're, we're, <laughs> we have a special, a special extra in our box for that. So we're, but anyway, you, um, we can, I have these little U-hooks that are high fire and they get stuck into the greenware when it's wet. And that's actually fired in there. But I, I do like this look better. Um, but with his long distance and his skinniness, I, I didn't do the whole so here's actually what our putts looks like um, as our in our next box so you'll have the snow the glitter his little snowflake so that's putts so let's see we'll go back to our other box first so then so you would have painted it out sealed it with your aerosol sealer put your snow and glitter on wait a couple hours or even till the next day then you can glue in your um, little pin lights and then you can put your pull your string through with your wire and then you have your nice little ornament or if you don't want you could just put a pin light in there too and he doesn't have to be an ornament either and then this one we just sealed it as after it was painted as well and then put our snow and glitter on and then we just have a nice little truck to sit on a shelf or on a desk so that's so that's our, our next to your, to your tree so there's a little bit of difference in the color you can see the bottom one because of the black it it made the um, red a deeper red than the one that's not antiqued um, this one I probably took off more of the black than the one that I did as we were doing it so you can you can see that it's however much you want to leave on or take off it makes a difference yeah, this is so to before antiquing ceiling you do it after um, nope you can antique I, I antique before I seal it. Some people will antique after they seal it. Um, it's kind of up to you. I, I usually antique it before I seal it. So, but you can you can do it either way. It probably wipes off a lot easier if you seal it first, and it may um, it may not get as dark as you want it if you seal it first. So that would probably but you can do it before or after. My, my preference is to do it before. And if you're doing a big area, like uh, uh, say the tree, you would do half of the tree at a time. You prefer to seal after you. Right. So I, I antique after I. No, you said that backwards. <laughs> I'm saying it backwards. Okay, so paint your truck that you're going to antique. Paint it out. Then you can antique it. And then you can seal it. So um, th this truck, you would just seal it because it's not antiqued. But if you want to antique it, you can antique it too. It don't matter. I just picked one and antiqued it so you could see the difference between antiquing 
and not antiquing. So yes, paint your truck out. Um, then you can antique it with your black, or you could even use the rust color if you wanted it to look more rusty. And then you can seal it. And then you can put your snow and your glitter on. Let that dry a couple hours or even till the next day. Then you can glue your pin lights in and then put your hanger through. So that pretty much ties up our last portion of this box. You guys have the wiring. Um, it was hard to see my wiring. There's in the BIS box group, there's a glazer video on how to wire it. It's the same light kit and it's wired the same way. Um, Courtney says she'll share it again. Um, you should have plenty of pin lights, plenty of snow, plenty of glitter. Um, you can always save those things over for projects you want to do yourself too in the future. Um, let's see, I do have, um, we do have the putts here. He's our retro snowman for our next box. I have our Jack and he's got his little scarf on now. So he's cuter than ever. He's color washed with the navy. Our putts is color washed with a medium blue and then dry brushed with the white and he's the navy and then dry brushed with white. And then he's got his little scarf on and that'll come in your kit. The snow and the glitter will come in the kit. He actually had red glitter, but I didn't have red glitter. It was all at Courtney's house, so I couldn't put glitter on him. And then we have our snuggle up, cuddled up. I'll keep on and call him snuggle. He's cuddled. So this is Clay Magic's new, newest snowman, and he's called cuddled up, and he's done with antiquing. And I used the French vanilla and then the barn, I think it was real red, and then the gold. And then I also did him with white, in case someone doesn't like the um, off-white cream color. So it's done the same way. It's just that one. this one is white and this one was the French vanilla, just so you could see the difference. So um, Courtney will post the picture in the group, plus we'll get the unboxing video done here tomorrow, hopefully. Um, let's see, I think that's about it. Our invoices will go out on the 1st. Oh, because their boxes will boxes ship, on ship on Thursday. Oh, we got through our box too quick. Yeah, we know. rushed too quick. Well, we will come up with some with a project for next week, something different, something quick. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. something. Yeah. We could have skipped tonight then and done it next week. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We got them done. So um, maybe, I, I don't know, we'll come up with something. We'll paint something next week. We'll do something. We'll, we'll, um, we'll see. We'll come up with something cute. So, Otherwise, I guess you guys have a great week. Look for your invoices to come on the 1st. Pay by the 4th, and we'll ship them on the 5th. Um, Courtney has a Black Friday special for you guys or for anyone that sees our page. And we have... We're going to do the 10 piece dry brush set, which is our flats. And this is also the set that came, if you subscribed from August through December, you got this set free in your, as your extra in your box. You have the rounds. It was a 10, a 8, a 5, a 3, and a 0. And the same with the flat, it was a 10, a 8, a 5, a 3, and a 0. And these are $29.99. And if you order it, um, the Black Friday special, we will include the Harold's Easy Brush Cleaner, which is a $5 retail value. So that's the gift with the purchase. That's our black, one of the Black Friday specials. It's the 10-piece dry brushes. It's the Royal and Langnickel bristle brushes. Um, it's a good, good base set. You can always have more than one brush because you seem to go through more than if you're painting one piece with lots of detail, you may need three or four of a, the same size in order to keep your brushes dry and to switch to different um, brushes. So this, the dry brush set is $29.99 for 10 brushes. And then the Black Friday special is adds in the Easy Brush Cleaner. And with this, you put it in the bottom of your water bowl or you can put it in the sink and then you run water and you brush your brushes back and forth and it, it just cleans them wonderfully. And that's one of the keys to lifelong um, brushes is to keep them nice and clean. 
And Cordy says this will fit in your, um, the BIS box next week if you wanted free shipping as well. Then they would just need to message you. Mm -hmm. And then you can just message us and she'll add it to your invoice. And then the other set will be the Brenda's Beginner's Brush Set, which is a, just a good basic starter set, um, budget friendly. We have a um, base coating brush. We have three of the dry brushes. We have a, I think it's an 8, 5, and a 3. And it's those same dry brushes that you just seen. It's the Royal and Langnickel bristle brushes. And then we have our round nylon painting brushes, which again is the 8, 5, and the 3. Royal and Langnickel. And then you have a nice liner brush, the liner brush that I use, the Royal Majestic 4595. And the price on that is? And she's double checking the price. And then if they check it on the website, um, we'll include the brush pad. And then this kit. This set will also include the Harold's brush cleaner. And this set is also $29.99, but it's just a good starter set. Or even if you need additional brushes, you get a nice base coating brush for bigger pieces, medium to bigger pieces. You have your dry brushes, your painting out brushes, and then your liner brushes for detail. And then the Black Friday special is the Harold's Easy Brush Cleaner, which is a $5 retail value. And then Cordy says we have a giveaway that we're going to do, but I think she's going to post that tomorrow. So watch for that tomorrow. Oh, she's calling it a true Black Friday, not the Thursday pre-sale stuff. So we have the dry brush kit, or we have the beginner's um, painting set that I selected, or even an add-on brush, brush set that's good for. Either one is $29.99, and you'll get your Harold's Easy Brush Cleaner in there, which is great. It helps you take care of your brushes and last extends their lifetime. So I think that's it for tonight. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate every one of you, um, everyone that purchases from us as well. Um, if there's anything that we can do to help, let us know. Thank you for standing through our video kinks here. We'll, we'll get them all worked out. Uh, make sure you wash your brushes out when you're done painting always. That's a key thing in making them last longer. Um, have a great week, and we will have some kind of a project or something. Uh, maybe it'll be just something all together surprise. We'll see for next week. And then the following week, you'll have your um, December box, and we will start with our um, painting our snowmen, your learning in color wash. So thank you guys so much. We appreciate you, and have a good week.